And you see this book? I'm here. We have a special guest, the author of this book, uh, General Anthony Tata, which I, w I so want to say Tata. But General <laughs> Anthony Tata performed the duties of the Under Secretary of Defense for Policy in the Trump administration from November to January, November 2020 to January 2021. He is a 28-year veteran of the United States Army, during which time he served as the Deputy Commanding General of the 10th Mountain Division and Joint Task Force 76 in Afghanistan from 2006 to 2007, where he earned the Combat Action Badge and Bronze Star Medal. He is the author of numerous best-selling novels, including his latest, The Phalanx Code, and is a Newsmax National Security Contributor and a frequent foreign policy guest commentator on Fox News and CNN, please welcome to the show, General Anthony Tata. Jimmy, great to be with you. Thank you. Now, how many how, how many uh, how many privates did you have to uh, asses did you have to bust <laughs> when they tried to call you General Tata? Because I I tried to. <laughs> I I would just say, Jimmy, that I've I've been called worse four letter words. Okay, and, uh, <laughs> leave, leave it leave it at that. So I the 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 praise for this book is amazing, right? Uh, so the publishers weekly say lots of credible action, plenty of government traders, and shocking losses fuel the action. Tata Tata continues to rise among the ranks of today's top military action writers. Mark Cameron is a number one New York Times bestselling author, and he says, full of energy and snapping with action, chasing the lion is Tony Tata at his best. Garrett Sinclair is a powerhouse of a hero. There's all people are. Uh, if you're looking for a good night's sleep, leave this one on the nightstand, says Jimmy Carr. Also, Tony Tata has written a white knuckled read that I dare you to put down. So this lots of great praise for this book. And uh, I didn't know that generals uh, wrote fiction and did it well. So congratulations on that, sir. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. It's always been a good outlet for me, and I've I've enjoyed um, delivering sixteen novels, and uh, you know, readers seem to enjoy them, and I like uh, you know uh, entertaining. Uh, sixteen. My yeah, sixteen. Wow, is, sixteen. So I, my sixteenth novel. So uh, tell me that what's the ins inspiration for this one? This this one, by the yeah. way, it's going into a second printing, correct? Yeah, yeah, they just, uh, I got an email today, said they're waiting on another printing before they can send me some books uh, to, to send out some folks. So uh, the the basic premise um, or the inspiration was about three years ago, Jimmy, remember when uh, some guy in the White House called some guy at Twitter and said, we don't like these 50 people, so deplatform them, demonetize them and kick them off. Yeah. And I thought, like, how bad is that? Like, uh, that's so un-American. Uh, big tech and big government coming together to put their jackboot on the little guy. And so that's really the premise here is there's, uh, you know, the Phalanx Corporation is a big, I think Google and Facebook and their worst digital carnivore instincts uh, measured or matched with government fighting against those that are trying to develop uh, decentralized Wi-Fi, decentralized finance, those last uh, frontiers of digital freedom. And our hero, Garrett Sinclair, is co-opted in to help and defend uh, the, the Optimist Project, which think Elon Musk in his best instincts, trying to preserve liberty. And, and I wrote this before Musk bought Twitter or any of that stuff. It just really upset me that some dude in the White House could call some dude at Twitter and say, deplatform these people. And he'd say, yeah, no problem. Let's go get a cheeseburger. So you don't. You, so now you're a. Uh uh, general, and you're saying that when the government censors, they're not doing it for national security reasons or to protect me? It, it's all about political power, Jimmy. Uh, we all know this. And, and so this uh, Biden uh, uh, regime or administration, uh, they're, they're doing very calculated political moves, not only to secure their power for the near term, uh, but for the long term with this this mass uh, uh, migrant, uh, uh, you know, to flood districts to, you know, you, you can't you can't ask people if they're citizens when you do the census count. It's all about um, creating a political power base that um, uh, will be forever if, if we don't get in front of it. And, and it may be too late even then. 
So you think? So let me ask you this question because you served under uh, President Trump, and I, I, I have a couple of questions about that. One: Why do you think so? Because Donald Trump was loved by the establishment and the donor class my entire life. He was invited on every late night talk show. He was asked to guest host Saturday Night Live. He was on the cover of every magazine. NBC gave him his own uh, Emmy Emmy nominated television show for over a decade. And Hollywood stars would come and bend their knee and call him Mr. Trump. And uh, he his his daughter's best friends with the Clintons. He used to go golfing with Bill Clinton uh, they all went to his, their all their second and third weddings together. They all loved each other until Donald Trump became president. And then he became uh, a, a combination of Hitler, Mussolini, Pol Pot, and Idi Amin. And uh, why do you think that is? Why do you think that this this billionaire, Donald Trump, who was loved by that billionaire class, went to becoming such a pariah and the and the origin of everything wrong and evil in America. What happened? Yeah, so his America First agenda disrupts this globalist agenda, and and by uh, pulling together the middle class in particular in a very Reaganist kind of fashion, uh, he disrupted this eight years of Obama and a projected eight years of Hillary Clinton uh, to cement all the things that we were just talking about with respect to the progressive agenda that has really taken root here. You look at the universities and how insanely liberal they are and the, and the pro Hamas um, uh, pro, uh, protests that are going on uh, in the universities. And, and so, you know, for, for me, this is all about disrupting the the liberal agenda the progressive agenda and and uh you know president trump does that it, you know because he he wants to put america first he wants to put americans first and and so they they have to uh pursue him the way they're pursuing him with their lawfare and calling him hitler when in fact you know you look at the biden administration and they're they're doing some serious projection you know all you got to do is uh, watch um uh yesterday's um uh, hearing with uh, her, the special counsel, the Biden had classified documents in nine or 10 places. Um, and yet, and they were all unsecured. <laughs> and, and he, and he knew what he was doing. He told his, his uh, biographer, um, his ghostwriter that he was, oh, yeah, the classified documents are in the basement. Why don't you go grab them? And so, but he's not being charged, right? And so there's this double system. They got to get rid of Trump somehow. Because he, if he's got so much support right now. If he disrupts, the, if he wins, he will disrupt the momentum that's happening uh, from a progressive left standpoint. And uh, that's it's, it's really sad because, you know, we've got a great country, but we're on the brink of fundamentally changing it, as Barack Obama promised. So um, I agree with a lot of what you said. The only thing I'm curious about is you say that he interrupts the progressive left agenda agenda. But. As you know, the establishment Republicans hate him as well, and they won't stand up for him, and they won't say what you just said that the, this is a this is a selective prosecution by the U.S. Uh, Justice Department about his classified documents. We all know that Joe Biden took classified documents, and he took them. At, he was vice president when he took those. He wasn't the president. Joe, Pre President Trump was the president. He's the only person who could declassify those documents. Right. Joe Biden took them when he was vice president, and he took them so he could give him to a, a ghostwriter so he could write a book. So it was all about an $8 million book deal. That's yeah, what Joe yeah. Biden was really about. And he's been about money his whole career. We know this. So why is the Republican establishment also going, if this is about Donald Trump interrupting the left progressive, progressive agenda, why is the establishment in the Republican Party going along with his prosecutions? Yeah, I, th I, th I think two things there, Jimmy, and uh, you make really good points. Uh, one is, you know, the, the, the Republicans are about money, too. And, and, and uh, you know, Trump sort of disrupts uh, some of their their cash flow, um, you know, whether it's from donors or, um, you know, making them, uh, you know, if, if you're not supportive of Trump, you're sort of, you know, if you're not my friend, you're my enemy kind of thing. And, and so, you know, some people don't know where to, where to position themselves with respect to President Trump. And uh, so there, I think there's that piece. And then I think the media 
uh, goes after people so hard, the mainstream media, that people are you know scared to pop up out of the foxhole to support the president uh, because they're going to get shot between the eyes by one of the corporate media out there. And, you know, it's a blood sport right now. And certainly if you're out there front running for President Trump, uh, you're, you're going to get a lot of slings and arrows in your back um, uh, for, you know, just for supporting the guy. Like Dr. Ben Carson, um, you know, is out there supporting him, you know, openly on social media. Here's, here's a flaw, as, as flawless a human being um, uh, as you can have him and Candy, his wife, uh, awesome people. I, I know them, and and they're getting all these accusations. They're getting all this, um, you know, stuff thrown at them. And it, you know, you got to have some tenacity um, to to put up with that. And so I think it's those two things. One is, um, you know, the media goes after people, and the other is, uh, you know, the, the Republicans. Um, you know, maybe, you know, it's kind of a uniparty in some respects to support, you know, a lot of the very moderate, um, that, well, moderate now or left, uh, you know, the whole thing has shifted hard, hard to the left. And so people who used to be center left Democrats are now center right Republicans. Um, uh, you know, it, it shifted so hard. So, uh, but they got a vote. So, well, I, I would actually say, People who are uh, actually uh, conserv- uh, right-wing, warmongering authoritarians are now somehow considered to be left. People yeah, like never changes. People like people <laughs> like Joe Biden. People right, like people right. like Hillary Clinton. People like everybody in the Democratic Party who's elected, yeah. uh, pretty much. Uh, they're they're all authoritarian, right? And that COVID proved that they're all pro-war. Uh, Ukraine, right. Ukraine proved that, um, and so. My theory is why uh, that uh, he's hated by the de- Democrats and the Republicans and why the Republicans won't stand up and point out the inconsistencies in the political prosecution of Donald Trump and his following. Right. Now, January 6th, they went along with January 6th, uh, meaning right. the prosecution of it, uh, which was an unfair, cherry picked, bogus bullshit prosecution, which is why they didn't try to prosecute Donald Trump in an actual court of law. They did a show trial. and We've called the January right. 6th hearing a show trial since it started uh, because right. the, because that was all about a show. And then Tucker Carlson reveals the videos they didn't want you to see, which completely upends their whole narrative. And it's right. all about criminalizing their political. And then the reason I think that the Republicans go along with this is because they're controlled by the same billionaire class, the same donors yeah. that run the wef run this country run the democratic mm-hmm. party run the republican party and they only get to fight over bullshit things right like right now right. they they all uh, they all supported the ukraine war they all supported uh what's uh, israel and gaza they all supported covid and lockdowns and mandates and uh they all supported censorship and some some uh, it's weird because it has flipped the, the only time you'll get voices against censorship or against uh, the war in Ukraine, for instance, is from Republicans, right? So that they have a much bigger anti-war, anti-censorship uh, a co- a caucus in the Republican Party, but it's still not the majority whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And I just think it's that uh, it, that the donor class, uh, that's the game they play. And the Republicans and the Democrats don't have really any big, big disagreements between each other. They agree on all the most horrible things. They agree on right. they agree on war. They agree on authoritarianism. Uh, they agree on censorship, squash. They, they agree on being against workers. Um, they agree against all, all the, on all this stuff. And so I think and here's the big I think the big thing that Donald Trump did and and Chuck Schumer admitted it on Rachel Maddow's show was that Donald Trump would not be controlled by the deep state. They couldn't control him. Right. And do you agree with that? Because Chuck Schumer said that he's being very stupid to go against the CIA and the intelligence community because they have six ways to Sunday to mess with you. And what Chuck Schumer was admitting in that moment, uh, that's called a gaffe because he told the truth. Right. So the gaffe is <laughs> that and the truth is that the president does doesn't control the deep state, meaning the CIA, the FBI and the NSA. They control him. And do you would you agree with that, that that's the big problem with Donald Trump is that the the deep state, which doesn't work for the American people, doesn't work for the president. They work for a, the international billionaire class. That's what the NSA, the CIA and the FBI work for. So would you agree with any of that or disagree? Go ahead. No, I, I, I think you um, far more eloquently than I um, did. Um, 
you know, said the, the same thing I was trying to say is that they're controlled. They, they, they appreciate having, you know, big campaigns, uh, donations and, and funds, you know, all these people come in, you know, as average Joe Schmoes and they leave, you know, multimillionaires uh, when they leave Congress. And, and you got to wonder why, right? Whether it's insider trading or, or, you know, free money uh, or all of the above. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And then on the deep state aspect, um, I, you know, I came in as the deputy undersecretary of defense in August or July of uh, uh, 21. And my first week there, I find this document that um, had been written by somebody in the in Trump's uh, 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 DOD, and it it's a path to reestablishing the Iran nuclear deal. And they wanted me to sign it. And I said, oh, I may have just shown up here, but like I've been paying attention. And and I said, the president does not support the Iran nuclear deal. Why would you show this? Why would this document exist? Why would you be preserving a pathway to do that? And uh, this is 180 from the president's vision. And she just said, well, I thought that, you know, this is what I think ought to happen. I said, who, you know, the F elected you? Nobody elected. Your job is to follow the president's vision. And the president has been very clear about maximum pressure on Iran. And that does not include a golden bridge into the Iran nuclear deal. And so that's just one little personal example. It's real. The deep state is real. There are many good public servants, you know, working in the government. There are also many radicalized, insane uh, people that think that they are the ones who have been, uh, you know, uh, elected to to lead the nation. When in fact, you know, they're just a career, you know, GS or SES, and uh, they're they're plodding away and and building their little empires and you got that in the nsa you got it in the dni you got it in the fbi you got it in the cia and those people have unlimited power uh, and they can destroy people and they have destroyed people and just look at this concerted effort going on against president trump it's it's rather insane uh with everything um happening right now that to pre- preserve democracy, we got to kick this guy off the ballot. That that tells you like everything you need to, need to know about the Alice in Wonderland world that the you know we're living in right now. Because there are people, you know, fully you know probably 35 percent of the country is like, yeah, I'm all in for that. Let's let's preserve but democracy by by kicking a, a nominee off the ballot, and it makes no sense. It's obviously um, autocratic, and and that's that's where all of this is hitting, and that's what the phalanx code, quite frankly, is about: is that combination techno fascism, and and we're seeing it in real life right now. So, um, I I'll, I'll, I'll say just to add one more thing onto that is that when Donald Trump was asked uh, why he was leaving troops in Syria, he said that he's leaving troops in Syria for the oil. It's our oil and we're taking it. That's a direct quote. And so when I heard him say that, I knew he was in trouble because that's always been our foreign policy. That's what it's always been based on. And but I mean, you read, you know, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. We've known this, uh, that the 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 capitalists and the corporatists use the military to invade smaller countries or 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 use the CIA to uh, create foment discord, overthrow them. Uh, and then we install a puppet. We did it in Iran. We tried to do it in Venezuela most recently, and they rejected it right with Juan Guaido. And so Donald Trump just says it right out in the open. He looked into a camera and the whole con- the whole world heard the president of the United States say our foreign policy is based on invading smaller countries and taking their natural resources. He said it most recently just at a campaign stop a couple of weeks ago when he talked about, oh, you know, a Venezuela. He put economic sanctions on Venezuela. And so it, what it, that did is create seven million immigrants into the United States from Venezuela because he caused so much economic pain on them. And then he said, well, if, you know, if I was president, 
We would have we would have gotten that oil. They were just about ready to fall. We would have gotten that. Again, he keeps telling, he keeps giving the game away. And you're supposed to lie when you're the president. And you're supposed to say this is about freeing people from dictators and bringing them liberty and and freedom. That's what it's supposed to be about. But the game, he really gave it away when he said this is really about stealing natural resources. Just like when the United States and NATO blew up Nord Stream pipeline. Just like the Ukraine war, which Khashoggi. is a pro- which is a pro- pro- right. Look at Khashoggi. No one gives a shit about him. No one gives a shit about Gonzalo Lira. Right now, they're trying to kill Julian Assange because not because he worked with the Russians, but because he revealed the war crimes of America right. in Iraq. So um, that's I think that's the big thing. Those he he's not con- he wouldn't be controlled by the deep state. And now you know that President Biden, along with President Obama, along with President Bush and Clinton, they were all controlled by the deep state. And uh, and if you're not, you're not allowed to be president. And if you are somehow managed to squeak through as president like Trump did, they immediately do a thing called Russiagate on you, which was a conspiracy theory that was hatched by not only the Democratic Party and Hillary Clinton's campaign, but the FBI, who had to lie 17 times to the FISA court to get phone taps on the uh, Trump's uh, right. campaign, and even with those phone taps, they still couldn't find a, tr- a crime to co- right. to co- to convict him of. Right, and right. so so, and then they impeach. You know, people forget where they really impeached Donald Trump for was that he put a pause on weapon shipments to the Ukraine. So now the only reason to vote for the guy is now an impeachable offense because the deep state and the uniparty Republicans and Democrats want war. That's what this is all about. Hey, come see us do a live stand-up show. We're going to be in Stockholm, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, London, Oslo, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakmont, Pennsylvania, El Paso, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Edmonton, Alberta, Vancouver, Jeez. British Columbia, and Denver, Colorado. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for those tickets. Thank you.